The village of Maruka in Region 1 is a center of dazzling beauty and community cohesion. It is home to a number of Guyana's fascinating ecotourism wonders, among which are numerous bird species and endangered turtles. Quiet and peaceful, the beautiful village of Maruka is ideal for nature walks, swimming, canoeing and breathtaking boat rides in and around Maruka, which would help you connect with the people and nature. Improving the indigenous communities and preserving the culture of the indigenous peoples remains a front-burner issue for the government. Facilitating this process is the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, which supports activities that foster economic gains and the preservation of the indigenous culture. It is against this background that the annual Maruka Expo is held. The objective of this event, which forms part of Guyana's national calendar of activities, is to showcase the talents of the people and the rich flora and fauna of our rural indigenous community. It's a great, great, great pleasure for me to be here to celebrate with you the 11th Expo of Maruka. It is indeed a wonderful feeling to be here to see what you have to offer and I would like to support the speakers before me in encouraging you to greater heights, to get organized and to move on. Moruka is special, special in, it, in terms of where we move from here. It is special historically for putting out the best sons of the indigenous peoples of Guyana right from this Moruka. It is a, a fantastic event uh, in terms of it uh, pulling out uh, members from the communities across Maruka and this region um, and in terms of attracting persons from elsewhere across Guyana. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of visitors who actually come to Maruka Day each year. It is a major event on our tourism calendar as well. Um, that's the Ministry of Tourism and the Guyana Tourism Authority. Matter of fact, we had come here 11 years ago to start this event. Um, because we feel that the area has basically a lot of potential, uh, very, very rich culture, um, lots of attractions around here, um, including if you go further up Shell Beach. Um, I'd seen in March a harpy eagle nesting in this area, which is quite unusual. This year, the Maruka Expo was held from July 23 to 26 under the team One Culture, Many Livelihoods. The event has become an annual one and this year marked the 11th anniversary. It offered an opportunity for marketing the products of the indigenous communities while at the same time displaying their unique culture. However, there was a limited display of the crafts, foods and the products of the indigenous peoples. This did not go unnoticed by the Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, and Minister within the Ministry, Valerie Lowe, who both visited the sub-region for the event. Before Columbus came, we have been a special people. We were the greatest scientists because until today, we are the only ones who have could turn poison into food, and that's the cassava root. So we have quality, we have class. We need to work upon that, we need to organize. We are one of the greatest artists. We have artists across this country. We are great singers, as you heard, poets, sculptors. We need to pull these resources together, get organized, and learn to be accountable. As I said before Columbus came, we had a rich culture. We had a rich religious belief we were original, we were indigenous. After that, all sorts of names were given to us. So we need to be original. We need to keep our culture, our heritage, our identity, so that we could blend in to the national body of making a true Guyanese society. From what I'm seeing, I just bought this, for instance. This is good good handiwork from women, but, um, and also this, this is lovely, 
but I'm not seeing lots of this. I'm supposed to be seeing lots of craft. And um, I know long ago, they used to focus more on ind indigenous craft and indigenous foods. And the tops of these tents used to be like leaves, even if it's coconut leaves. But um, I, don't, I don't know what's happened, but this, I saw a flyer for this, and it was uh, inviting people to come and enjoy a uh, Maruka weekend getaway. So I don't think truly today is an expo, but what, what um, I'm glad that the Ministry of Tourism is here so they can um, assess for themselves and offer guidance and um, training uh, to bring this whole affair back to an, an expo that can reflect the indigenousness, eco-ness and everything and to make it more attractive for people, encourage people to come and enjoy the eco, the environment, the craft, the indigenousness of the whole affair as it's supposed to be. Our women here need to concentrate more on the, um, on the craft aspect especially. I came here in um, 2013, I did an arts and craft two weeks course here and they produced a lot of stuff including um, decorative indigenous dolls. Dolls then with decorative indigenous, um, decorative clothing like banana leaf, corn leaf and all those things. They did lots of earrings and bands, headbands and different craft and so on. So I would like to see more of that done because they have the ability to do it. Region 1 used to be the number one uh, craft producing region in Guyana. Um, and so we need through uh, this expo to work with the community uh, to restore uh, that kind of honor. Um, and now uh, we have a team of us here from the Ghana Tourism Authority and the Ministry of Tourism. We are working with the community um, and including Ministry of Indigenous Affairs too to help them in planning and organizing these expos and to restore it to what it was uh, 10, 11 years ago. Um, this can be the ideal platform for almost every community in the sub-district. Uh, to have a boot here, to have representation in their culture, their custom, their craft, their food, you name it. Um, and it can be so rich because we do not have this anywhere else other than perhaps in the Rupununi and when it's um, Heritage Month. Because Heritage Month is another major celebration here. It is believed that the Expo has lost its focus. While there was a considerable absence of the local handicrafts, dishes and other products of the communities within the Maruka sub-region. It is against this background that the Ghana Tourism Authority has intervened and has conducted a survey to determine the effectiveness and success of the event. A committee will also be established to strengthen the activity and to ensure its effective management and coordination. To get the views of visitors and locals as to how the event is run, how it is managed, um, how do they hear about the event? Um, who do they come with? Where do they come from? How much do they spend? And what they feel about how uh, many aspects of the event, from the aquatics to the other games, to the pageantry, to communication, to signage. And if you would notice, for instance, there's a complete absence of bins. Uh, so nowhere to put your trash. Um, so we want to, m to ensure that whenever they are doing events or for any event organizer and planner, that these things become very, very basics. The very basics, that these things are in place. The Miss Maruka pageant was one of the most anticipated events of the Expo since it showcased the true beauty, culture and knowledge of the various Amerindian communities. This year's pageant saw the participation of five beautiful and talented Amerindian girls from Cobana, Asakata, Santa Cruz, Santa Rosa and Manawarin and attracted a large gathering at the Kumaka Recreational Ground. The delegates modeled the various Amerindian clothing made from beads and straws. The talent segment showed off a variety of skills including singing, dancing and drama. The final question which saw Miss Santa Rosa Amanda Daniels being crowned Miss Maruka 
was list two ways in which the Maruka community can benefit from Maruka Expo. We received $40,000 courtesy of the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs. Other activities at the expo included archery competition, crab quake making and pepper sauce eating competition. Residents also took part in a football game and canoeing. Santa Rosa is the largest Amerindian village in Guyana. This predominantly Arawak village is located on the Maruka River, 29 kilometers from its mouth. The village is actually a collection of at least 10 settlements spread out in the savannah wetlands along a 10-mile stretch of the Maruka River.